The series starts by introducing this guy named Kim Min Kyu. He drives up to a building and before he gets out of his car, he takes some medicine from his bag. Then, he goes inside to meet three doctors who want to talk to him. Turns out Min Kyu wants to avoid military service, and the doctors are a bit skeptical about his reasons. You see, they read his biography, and it says he's allergic to humans. They find it hard to believe. But then, Min Kyu does something unexpected. He opens his jacket and gets close to one of the doctors, even holding their hand. His skin starts breaking out in a rash. That really surprises the doctors. So in the end, they give him the green light to skip military service due to his health condition. The scene changes and we see Min Kyu again. He seems to have everything going for him. Handsome face, rich, and he's the director of a company called Kim Financial. But deep down, he's actually really lonely. See, his parents passed away 15 years ago, and now he lives all alone in this huge house. Adding to his loneliness is this strange disease he has. He's allergic to human touch, and there's no cure for it. So it's tough for him to connect with people. The only company he has is his housekeeper, who he rarely sees. Sometimes the doctor comes by to check on him. But other than that, he's pretty much on his own, except for a few cleaning robots that keep him company at home. The scene changes, and we see this woman named Jo Ja right in the middle of a crowd. She's trying to buy the latest action figure because one of her customers asked for it. Ja works part-time and offers services to people. It was tough, but she finally managed to get the action figure. She then goes to meet her customer. It turns out her customer is Min Q. He asks her to put the action figure in his car so he can check it out. When Min Q looks at the packaging, he finds sauce stains on it and he decides to cancel the deal and not give Ja any bonus. Disappointed, he starts to leave, but Ja doesn't give up. She chases after his car, but ends up falling down. Min Q gets concerned and goes out to check on her, but it turns out she was just trying to keep him from leaving. Ja tries to stop Min Q again, grabbing his collar and begging him not to cancel the deal. But he manages to escape, leaving her upset and promising to get revenge for what he did. One day out of the blue, Min Q receives a video from Hong Bak Q, who is a robot researcher. In the video, Bak Q shows off his creation, a robot called AG3. He tells Min Q that the robot actually belongs to him because of some contract. Turns out, Bak Q's research site is part of Min Q's company, Cam Financial, which is facing bankruptcy and might be sold. The next day, Min Q visits Bak Q's research site, the Dong Shipbuilding, Santa Maria Research. There he sees AG3 and he's pretty excited because this robot can help him interact with humans without triggering his allergies. So he asks Bak-Q to send AG3 to his place for a test. If everything goes well, they'll talk about funding for the research. Meanwhile, Min-Q is attending a meeting at his company and he learns that Yuchul, the head of the development staff, has been hiding something about their subsidiary, the Dayang shipbuilding where Bak-Q works. Yuchul claims the place is bankrupt and will be sold soon. But Min Q knows that's not true because he saw it with his own eyes when he visited the site. On the other hand, Bak Q accidentally damages AG3, and it takes him two days to fix it. He calls Min Q, asking for more time, but he doesn't reveal that the robot is damaged. When Min Q hears this, he tells Bak Q that they only have three days left before the Dayang shipbuilding is sold to a company called Bold from England. After that, Bak Ken does some research on the company and finds out they are actually patent hunters, not robot researchers. Then, he contacts Ja, who happens to be his ex-girlfriend and the model for AG3. He offers her a job and offers to pay her 10,001. Bak Ken takes Ja to the research site, and she's shocked to see that AG3 looks exactly like her. She talks to her friend, Sun Hai, about Bak Ken's offer. Although she's unsure about it, she eventually decides to take the job and work with him to pay off her sister-in-law's debt. Meanwhile, Min Q realizes that his necklace is missing and starts to panic. The next day, they get Ja all dressed up and equipped with lenses and earphones connected to AG3. Then they send her off to Min Q's house in a crate. At the same time, Min Q calls Ja to ask about his missing necklace because he remembers her pulling his collar the other day. When they open the crate, Ja is surprised to see Min Q standing there. Ja almost blows her cover but Bak Ken comes up with an excuse, saying that AG3 is in friend mode, and Min Q believes it, although he's a bit clueless. Then Bak Ken orders Ja to act as the AG3 robot, and Min Q presses a button on the back of her neck. However, just then, the electricity at the research site goes out, leaving Ja confused about what to do. 
Without Bat Ken's help, she relies on her instincts and manages to pass Min Q's test. At the same time, her brother, Jinbi, and Min Q's secretary inform Min Q that the project funds have been corrupted for the past three years by the head of social contributions. After hearing the corruption news, Min Q tells Jinbi to make the head of social contribution resign. If they don't, he threatens to report the embezzlement to the authorities. Then Min Q asks Jinbi to sue either President Zhou or Jia for stealing his necklace. Later, Min Q tests Jia again, asking her about the person who stole his necklace. She tells him, you should have investigated before accusing her. Suddenly, Min Q starts choking on his medicine, and it's almost fatal. But Jia quickly saves him by hitting his back. It's strange because his illness doesn't react when she touches him, even though she's a real human, not a robot. Back at the research area, Bat Ken scolds Jia for not following his instructions, even though their plan worked. She's not happy about it and asks him to change AG3's face. Meanwhile, Min Q calls Yu Chul and tells him to cancel the sale of the Daeang shipbuilding, even though Yu Chul is in a meeting with the Bold Company. Later, Jia finds Min Q's necklace, which her sister in law had found while doing laundry. She calls Min Q to get his address so she can return it. Then she goes to a place to work on a lamp experiment she's making. Jia borrowed money from her sister-in-law to create the lamp experiment for a competition held by KM Financial. Little does she know that Min Q is the company's leader and that her sister works there. On the other hand, Min Q is still thinking about what happened earlier and is amazed by AG3. He's already interested in the robot and plans to train it even more. The scene changes and we see Bak Kin feeling dizzy because one of the replacement parts for AG3 is delayed. It's because one of his team members, Hochtel, entered the wrong shipping address. The replacement part will arrive in five days. At the same time, Min Q calls Bak Kin and asks him to send AG3 back to his home. Min Q tells Bak Kin that he postponed selling the Daeang shipbuilding for a month because he wants to test AG3. However, Bak Kin refuses to send AG3 again because Min Q didn't sign their contract the other day. Later, Jin B comes to Min Q and reports that the head of social contribution resigned. Min Q orders Jin B to postpone all company projects and not worry about the stolen necklace anymore. Then he explains that he canceled the sale of the Daeang shipbuilding because his father, Song Jin, wanted to develop robots, but the company rejected the project. So his father made a secret deal with Bak Kin and assigned him to work on the robot project secretly at the Daeang shipbuilding, with a budget of 100 billion. Min Q instructs Jinbi to keep an eye on Yuchul and his father, Dawan, in the company. Jinbi agrees and promises to do his best. Before Jinbi leaves, Min Q tells him to make a deal with Bak Kin and his team, advising them to follow his directions because it's the best choice for them at the moment. The scene changes, and we see Min Q visiting his parents' graves on the anniversary of their death. Suddenly, Dawan shows up, claiming to pay his respects to. Dawan notices that his son, Yuchul, is not as capable as Min Q and asks Min Q to support Yu Chul's career at the company as a friend. But Min Q says he doesn't have that much influence in the company and walks away. Meanwhile, because of Min Q's order to postpone all projects at KM Financial, Jia and Sun Hai try to find the owner's home address to submit a request to continue their project. To their surprise, they discover that the owner of KM Financial is Min Q, which makes Jia nervous, so she covers her face. Back home, Jia argues with Jin Bi and accidentally breaks a lamp. He's suspicious about the 10,001 she got one day, and their argument makes Jia upset, leading her to leave. But her sister-in-law, Hong Zhou, stops her from leaving. Later, Jia gets a call from the man who made her lamp art. He asks for her help to sell the remaining items in his store, since he's moving out due to the end of his lease. Jia agrees to help, takes the goods in a cart, and tries to sell them on the road. Unfortunately, she doesn't have any luck selling anything. At the same time, Min Q notices that the Daeang Shipbuilding Company is listed for sale at a very low price. He starts thinking of ways to save the company his father had built. The scene changes, and Jia receives a message from one of Bak Kinnan's team members named Sanip. He asks for her help again because they still can't fix AG3. This makes Jia think she needs to do something to pass her lamp art so she can get the money she needs. The next day, Jia goes to Bak Kinnan's place and agrees to help them for free but she asks him to find her a place to live in return. They then leave the Daeang shipbuilding, taking all their things with them. Shortly after, two men named Miami and Alf come to the Daeang shipbuilding. They report to their boss that Bak Kinnan's team has disappeared. 
This confuses Dalman when the leaders of the Bold Company ask him questions. As it turns out, Uchul didn't cancel the transaction with the Bold Company after all. On the other hand, Bak Ken brings all his research items to Min Q's and Jia's house, hidden in a bag. Min Q then provides Bak Kyun and his team with a new place to live in his warehouse, with a few conditions. Min Q planned this so they could continue their research safely, as he knew the Daeang shipbuilding was no longer secure. The next day, Jia goes back to pretending to be AG3 and visits Min Q's house. He starts raiding her, thinking she's a robot, and connects her to his electronics, because he loves electronic gadgets and is proud of his collection. He shows her some items like a back scratcher, an old vacuum machine called Pretty 2, and another vacuum called Pretty 3, which he treats as having a birthday. Jaya finds it all a bit strange, but Min Q tells her that she'll get points and be ranked highest if she can beat these electronics. Meanwhile, Bai Kim, who's watching from a monitor, laughs but ends up having a stomach ache from eating expired curry the day before. On the other hand, Jia also ate the expired curry and gets a stomach ache. While listening to Min Q's explanations about his home, she realizes that the necklace she accidentally took belongs to Min Q's late mother, which surprises her. Her stomach ache becomes unbearable, so she lets out a fart near Min Q, who's taken aback by the sound. She quickly makes up an excuse about Min Q's pants smelling bad and suggests he changes them. Thankfully, she finds a toilet and manages to relieve herself. After using the toilet, Jia sprays 1001 worth of perfume to mask any smell. But suddenly, Min Q enters the toilet and she's startled. She tells him she's cleaning the toilet and he believes her, although he gets a bit suspicious when he sees sweat on her cheeks. In an attempt to check her out, Min Q slips on soap and the expensive perfume he's holding falls on him. Ja quickly catches it, but Min Q feels hurt because Ja was wearing a corset made of titanium at that time. He scolds Ja for choosing to save the perfume instead of him. After that, he practices situations where Ja can save him, but her confused actions end up making him laugh, earning her ranking points instead. Soon after, Min Q invites Ja to check out the fridge, which is stocked with fresh and expensive food ingredients. He then decides to teach Ja how to cook, which piques the interest of Bak Kyun and his team. While Min Q is eating, Jia intentionally shows him an advertisement for Kiem Financial Company, hoping he'll change his decision about canceling the program she's involved in. However, Min Q dismisses it, saying he's not interested in an art event full of lies. Deep down, Jia feels mocked because her lamp art wasn't her original work. Jia then asks Min Q about the kind of person he is at Kiem Financial Company but he doesn't feel like explaining and changes the subject, asking her to help the senior vacuum cleaner who's cleaning the house. Although annoyed, Ja reluctantly obeys. Suddenly, she accidentally drops the card arrangement Min Q made. Panicking, she claims her battery has run out and pretends to be asleep to avoid getting scolded. The scene changes. Min Q meets back Kunan on the terrace outside his home to discuss AG3's problem. Min Q complains that AG3 can't be controlled but at the same time, Ja and Sanip sneak into his house to take the leftover meat Min Q threw away. Bak Kyun tries to distract Min Q so that Ja and Sanip can grab the almost expired meat. Later that night, they all eat the meat together while Min Q searches for a way to train wild dogs, as Bak Kyun suggests, thinking it might help with AG3's issues. The next day, Min Q scolds Ja for breaking the cart arrangement he made 15 years ago, explaining that it was precious to him. Just then, Yuchul arrives at Min Q's house and saves her from his anger. Min Q asks Ja to hide so Yuchul doesn't see her. Yuchul questions Min Q about canceling the sale of the Daeang Shipbuilding Company. Min Q explains that even if he's offered double the price, he will still refuse to sell the company, regardless of whether Yuchul gets angry. Once Yuchul leaves, Min Q looks out the window where Ja is observing them. He tells her to pay attention to Dawan and Yuchul's faces and warns her to avoid them since they are his biggest enemies. Shortly after, Jinbi comes to Min Q's house, and Ja is asked to prepare coffee for them. She discovers that her elder brother works as the head of investigation at Min Q's company. Thankfully, he can't see her true identity, so Jinbi won't find out about her secret. The scene changes, and we see Ja with Min Q, heading meet someone. On the way, Ja takes the initiative to steer towards a crowd of people demonstrating, pleading with Kim Financial to continue the competition they were part of. However, she soon learns that the head of social contribution at Kim Financial embezzled the event funds, leading Min Q to decide against continuing the competition. 
Later, Min Kyu meets Sumte, who happens to be Yuri's father. Yuri is Min Kyu's childhood friend, and they discuss investing in game companies. However, Min Kyu declines because Cam Financial is not into investing, but rather buying and selling. Before leaving, Sumke mentions that his daughter will arrive in Korea the next day. On their way home, Min Kyu shares with Ja that his parents died in a car accident 15 years ago. Seeing him feeling down, Ja switches to friend mode to cheer him up. Meanwhile, Yuchul watches a video about the AG3 robot research and discovers that the Daeang shipbuilding company is actually involved in robot research, not shipbuilding as he initially thought. He also finds out that Dowen purposely concealed the research facts to prevent Min Kyu from taking over the research against him. Since Min Kyu's parents passed away, Dowen has been trying to gain control of Cam Financial, including the robot research that Min Kyu's father established, as Dowen's family owns only 30% of the company, while Min Kyu's family has a 70% stake. The next day, Yuri finally arrived at Min Kyu's house. She proudly announced that she had been appointed by Yu Chul as the new head of social contribution at Min Kyu's company. Yeri revealed that her father set her up with Min Kyu, and even confidently said she would accept him as her husband if he gave her his first kiss on a date later. Meanwhile, Jod is watching Yeri from a distance and feels jealous because Yeri has a lot of work experience. Soon after, Yeri holds Min Kyu's hand, causing his skin to react severely, and they go inside the house. Ja quickly administers medicine to alleviate Min Kyu's condition. The scene changes, showing Min Kyu's past life. He had a pleasant childhood, but everything changed when his parents died in an accident. Since then, Dawan started plotting to take over all the companies owned by Min Kyu's family. However, someone named Madden X protected Min Kyu by giving him a letter with advice not to sign or answer anything to avoid Dawan's traps. Dawan tries to get Min Kyu to sign documents concerning the ownership of KM Financial by using the burial certificate. But after getting a strange skin disease when Yuchul handed him a file left by Dawan, Min Kyu chooses to follow Madang X's advice instead of Dawan's orders. Due to the disease, he decides to live alone in his house rather than be part of Dawan's plans. The scene shifts back to Min Kyu waking up, and his skin disease seems to heal faster than usual. He thanks Ja for quickly injecting him with medicine but gets angry again because she injected too much. Ja leaves the place and notices that the action figure she bought earlier is stained with sauce. She realizes that Min Kyu was telling the truth. Later, Ja returns to the research area, where Bak Kyun scolds her for getting too close to Min Kyu. She leaves without him noticing and Bak Kyun looks jealous of their closeness, knowing that Ja isn't AG3. The scene changes, and Ja meets up with Sun Hai to share her experience as a robot at Min Kyu's house. Meanwhile, the package containing the necklace she sent finally arrives. Min Kyu calls Ja to check if the necklace is okay. They discuss their plan to submit an application form to Cam Financial to continue their race. On the other side, Yuchul shows Jinbi a video of AG3, and Jinbi is surprised to see that AG3's face resembles his younger sister's. This leaves him feeling torn between following Yuchul's plans or remaining on Min Kyu's side. In the afternoon, Min Kyu visits the research site out of curiosity about AG3. Fortunately, he doesn't know Ja's location because Bak Kyun installed a tracking device on his cell phone. Bak Kyun blocks Min Kyu's access to keep their secret safe. Later, Bak Kyun and Pai watch the footage of Min Kyu suffering from an allergy, but they can't comprehend his illness. Meanwhile, Jinbi has trouble sleeping as he ponders about AG3. He discovers that Ja and Bak Kyun used to date, and he notices that Bak Kyun may be developing feelings for her again. The next day, Min Kyu asks Ja to open the necklace package she sent. He says he will give the necklace to the right woman someday. At the same time, Yuri starts working at Kim Finance and meets Yuchul. It's evident that Yuchul has feelings for her. Meanwhile, Jimmy visits Bak Kyun and asks him to change AG3's robot face. He also inquires about why Ja and Bak Kyun broke up, and Jimmy notes that Ja's character changed after the breakup. This leads Bak Kyun to think that Ja may still have feelings for him. While Ja is with Min Kyu, he expresses his desire to be normal. They almost kiss, and Min Kyu mentions his hope to touch the woman he will marry someday. Later, Min Kyu opens a box and finds letters sent by Yeri every year, and he places the necklace inside. The scene changes, and Ja notices that her request letter has arrived at Min Kyu's house. Unfortunately, he doesn't read the letter, and instead asks her to go somewhere with him. 
Meanwhile, Bak Kimin and Pai watch the footage of Min Q almost kissing Ja, which makes Bak Kim jealous. He instructs Pai to get Ja out of Min Q's house. However, it turns out that Min Q takes Ja with him to a different place. Bak Kim doesn't stay silent and tracks down Min Q's whereabouts. He chases after them. Min Q then asks Ja to accompany him on a date with Yuri. During the date, Min Q asks Ja to prepare Yuri's favorite drink using the glass she gave him 15 years ago. However, their date doesn't go well because Yuri is not the same person he knew 15 years ago. So he decides not to marry her and suggests remaining friends instead. Despite that, Min Q still gives Yuri a necklace that belonged to his mother, and she agrees with his decision because she wasn't interested in marrying him from the beginning. However, Yuri doesn't accept the necklace as she feels it's not something she should take. They shake hands in agreement to remain friends, and this causes Min Q's illness to start acting up. After Yuri left, Min Q was upset and decided to throw away the necklace she gave him. Thankfully, Jia stopped him and managed to calm him down. Surprisingly, the rash on his skin started disappearing slowly when she comforted him. It seemed like Jia's presence had a positive effect on his illness. Curious and excited, he took Jia home and opened up about why he refused to marry Yeri due to his condition. Min Q couldn't believe that the rash vanished without using the medicine. Even when someone accidentally bumped into him, his skin didn't react adversely. This made him happy, thinking that maybe his disease had been cured. To confirm, Min Q took Jia to a crowded place to see if his condition stayed fine among people. To his delight, his illness didn't come back while they were in the crowd, and he felt genuinely happy for the first time in his life. Enjoying the lively atmosphere, Jia encouraged Min Q to embrace the moment. However, just when he wanted to call his doctor to report the improvement, the rash suddenly reappeared after a woman bumped into him. It dawned on him that his illness improved only when he was close to Ja. Acting on this realization, he hugged Ja and kissed her forehead while they were still in the crowd. Unexpectedly, Bak Kin arrived and hit Min Q, leaving Ja puzzled. To save the situation, she pretended that her battery had run out, making them stop fighting. Bak Kin then took Ja with him, stating that their contract had ended, and she no longer needed to work with them. After the incident of the crowd, Min Q consulted with Dr. O, explaining everything that happened. The doctor advised him to record all important events when he was with AG3 so they could figure out the cause of the rash and find a cure. Meanwhile, the replacement part for AG3, which Bak Kyun had ordered, finally arrived. However, Ja felt uneasy about facing her elder brother, so she decided to go to the sauna and stay there for a while. While at the sauna, Ja couldn't help but think about her time with Min Q. Just like Min Q kept thinking about her as he continued his conversation with Dr. O. Dr. O eventually concluded that Min Q's illness disappeared because of the strong bond of trust between him and his robot. Meanwhile, Bak Kin couldn't stop pondering the encounter between Min Q and Ja. He left his place when he received a message from Pai about a problem they found. Unbeknownst to Bak Kin, Miami and Alf were following him, and they eventually discovered his hideout. Once he reached the research site, Bak Kin reviewed the recording of the moment Min Q was about to kiss Ja. It was then that he made up his mind to stop working with Min Q and look for other investors. Sanip, Hochtel, and Pai agreed with Bak Kin's decision, as they didn't want their robot to be involved in Min Q's inappropriate behavior. Deep down, Bak Kin also didn't want Ja to be too close to Min Q. On the other side of the story, Yuri met Yuchul and asked him out for a drink, revealing that Min Q had turned down her offer to go out with her. Yuchul felt happy about it, but then Min Q called Yeri and said he would go out with her after all. So Yeri had to cancel her invitation to Yuchul. Later, while in her room, Yeri noticed Ja's application form and became curious about it. Meanwhile, Ja was daydreaming about Min Q, and in the process, she ignored Sun Hai, who got annoyed. Sun Hai tried to tease Min Q, but Ja defended him. Later on, Ja received news from Cam Finance that they would continue evaluating her lamp which made her happy because it gave her a reason to go back to Min Q's house. In another scene, Bak Ken met with Min Q and told him that he wanted to terminate their contract because he didn't want AG3 to be owned by someone like Min Q, whom he considered perverted. Bak Ken, along with Pai, then tried to find new investors for their robot, but unfortunately, nobody seemed interested. On the other hand, Ja arrived at the gate of Min Q's house and called Pia to her suitcase. Pai instructed her to wait at the gate, and Sanip would deliver her luggage. However, the maid at Min Q's house saw Ja and took her inside.
When Sanab saw Ja being taken inside, he reported it to Bak Kin. Eventually, Ja returned to meet Min Q, who said that she must belong to him. He'd expressed his determination to protect Ja from Bak Kin, which surprised her. Soon after, Min Q meets with Sanip and Hoktal and tries to bribe them with a bunch of checks. But Pai arrives and refuses the checks, attempting to take them away from Min Q. Min Q doesn't give up easily. He makes another offer to the three of them, but Pai still declines. This leaves him confused and wondering how to prevent them from canceling the contract. Jaya suggests that Min Q cook food that Bak Kin likes, and he takes her advice and cooks the food himself. However, while cooking, Min Q accidentally cuts his finger with a knife. Ja wants to help, but he refuses, determined to protect her. This gesture amazes Ja and makes her appreciate his caring nature even more. Meanwhile, Pai, Sanip, and Hoktal plan to take on Ja, while Bak Kin cannot join them as he is still searching for other investors. They accept Min Q's dinner invitation and attend. During the dinner, Ja advises Min Q to change his approach so he can become closer to the three of them. As they talk about their parents, they discover that Min Q's parents died in an accident, which shocks and evokes sympathy from them. Afterwards, Ja confronts Pai and pleads with the team not to leave Min Q. Pai explains that they can't go against Bak Kin's decision. Before leaving, Sanip and Hoktal repair Min Q's favorite vacuum machine. When Min Q sees it working again, he hugs and kisses the machine in front of them. This gesture helps Pai, Sanip, and Hoktal realize that Min Q is not a pervert and that his actions towards AG3 or Ja come from a genuine and caring place. Grateful for Min Q's understanding and sincerity, they decide to spend the evening together as a sign of their newfound appreciation for him. The next day, Min Q wakes up alone, and Jinbi informs him that Bak Kyun's reputation as a professor has been tarnished due to slander from his co-workers. Upon hearing this, Min Q meets Bak Kyun and offers to help restore his reputation, but Bak Kyun insists on doing it on his own. Despite Min Q's attempts to persuade him, Bak Kin decides to leave, taking AG3 and his team away from Min Q's house. However, during their journey, Bak Kin starts to feel conflicted when he recalls Min Q's illness and realizes the importance of Ja and AG3 in helping Min Q recover. He can't ignore his responsibilities as a professor, so he eventually decides to return, bringing happiness to Min Q and Ja. The scene changes, showing Min Q picking up Ja to ensure her battery doesn't run out quickly. When they reach home, he jokingly mentions needing a kiss, making Ja's heart race with excitement. However, Min Q brings up Yuri's name and explains that he wants to learn to kiss better for their upcoming date. Ja, though happy, hides her jealousy. Soon after, Ja talks to Bak Kin about Min Q's desires. Bak Kin, concerned about Ja's well-being, plans to intervene and protect her from being treated as an experimental subject by Min Q. He brings in Sun Hai, pretending to be a romance expert known as the Goddess of Kiss, hoping to be used as a learning tool by Min Q. However, Sun Hai has different plans and instead tries to bring Min Q and Ja closer, knowing about Ja's feelings for him. The second date between Yuri and Min Q finally arrived. However, Bak Kun showed up, claiming to be accompanying Ja, which annoyed Min Q and Ja. Min Q took Yuri to the same place he had visited with Ja before and tried to replicate their previous date, but Yuri didn't enjoy it. Meanwhile, Miami and Alf were monitoring them under Yuchol's orders and were surprised to see a robot like AG3 eating ice cream. On the other hand, Sanip asked Hoktal to go with him to Sun Hai's place. Sanip fell in love with Sun Hai at first sight, but it seemed that Sun Hai was more interested in Hoktal. Shortly after, Yuri received a call from Yuchol and decided to meet him, leaving Min Q alone. At the same time, Bak Kyun bought an umbrella, anticipating the rain. However, he got stuck in a long queue, so Min Q ended up covering Ja with the umbrella he brought. Ja realized that the umbrella was the result of her crazy idea, made by Bak Kyun during their dating days, and it had even won a competition at Min Q's company. Min Q praised the genius behind the umbrella and expressed a desire to meet the creator someday. His words impressed Ja, but she accidentally bumped into someone and almost fell. Luckily, Min Q caught her, and in the heat of the moment, she unconsciously kissed his lips, surprising him. He got mad at Ja, feeling that a robot stole the first kiss he intended for Yeri. The scene changes, showing Min Q feeling a mix of anger and happiness over AG3's actions. He wondered if AG3 kissed him because she learned to do so. Intrigued, he visited the research site to speak with Pi about whether a robot can experience emotions. 
Pai explained that AG3 might be able to react as if she had emotions and act without waiting for commands. Min Q was impressed, realizing that AG3 is a highly advanced robot. Meanwhile, Jia also felt the same way and decided to reveal her true identity as a human to Min Q after the test ends. Min Q then calls Dr. O and shares everything that happened, except for the kissing incident with AG3. Dr. O is delighted to hear about Min Q's recovery and new outlook on life. He mentions having another patient with the same disease who improved after forming a romantic relationship with her nurse. Meanwhile, Bak Ken talks to Pai, intending to change his attitude and win back Jaw. Unaware of Pai's feelings for him, he seeks advice, and Pai suggests reflecting on past mistakes with Jia and learning from them. The next morning, Min Kyu asks Jia about the incident from the previous day, but she pretends not to remember it, which irritates him. Soon after, Sun Hai arrives. Min Kyu shares his frustration with Sun Hai, explaining that Jia stole his first kiss, but she seems to have forgotten about it. Sun Hai advises Min Kyu to go on a date alone with Yeri to have a successful first kiss, but whenever he imagines it, Jia's face pops up in his mind. Sun Hai suggests that Min Kyu shouldn't take Jia on a date, but he finds it impossible since he can't go anywhere without her, which further annoys him. Min Kyu tries to make Jia remember the moment from the previous night, but she chooses not to talk about it, making him even more upset. Min Kyu feels it's unfair that he's the only one who remembers such an important moment. As a punishment, he orders Jia to clean the entire house. While cleaning the window, Bak Ken spots Jia and can't stay silent knowing how she's being treated. He steps in to replace her, and when Min Kyu orders her to clean the umbrella, Bak Ken takes charge since it was his creation. However, Min Kyu is skeptical, as he can't believe Bak Ken could come up with such a good idea, and his compliment flatters Jia once again. At night, Min Kyu visits a research site and interacts with AG3. However, he realizes that AG3 is responding with the same answers as those given by Pai and Bak Kyun. He feels disappointed, realizing that all his interactions with AG3 were based on input from others. He decides to treat AG3 like any other robot, since their memories together were fake. Meanwhile, Sumti meets with Dawin, who proposes making Yuchul his son-in-law and the main director of the company. Dawin plans to remove Min Q from the company during a major stock gathering meeting. However, Sumti refuses the offer, as he had promised Min Q's lay father to support Min Q no matter what. Jinbi is searching for someone named Dongsa, who was Min Q's late father's former driver. At the same time, Min Q fulfills his promise to restore Bak Ken's reputation with a prepared article to be released after the AG3 tests are over. They celebrate at Sun Hai's tavern. Sun Hai, the romance expert, notices the complicated relationships among them. Pai likes Bak Ken, but he likes Jia, while Jia likes Min Q. Unbeknownst to Sun Hai, she is interested in Hoktal, who likes her back. She creates a challenge, and Pai and Bak Ken's fingers fold, leading them to leave the shop. Sun Hai takes Sanip and Hakul out, leaving Jia with Min Q. In a slightly drunk state, Min Q folds his fingers and confesses that he can't live without AG3. His heartfelt confession touches Jia's heart, and she finds herself liking him even more. The next day, Bak Kyun and his team finished repairing AG3, but it still couldn't mimic Jia's movements perfectly. Bak Kyun plans to make further improvements in four days, which means Jia has that much time left to continue pretending to be the robot. Once everything is done, they will reveal the truth to Min Q and let him know that Jia was the one who had been with him all along. In another scene, Min Q invites Jia to meet Yeri and her father. They discuss the possibility of an arranged marriage between Min Q and Yeri. Min Q suggests getting engaged first, but Yuri seems hesitant about the idea. Despite her reservations, her father, Sungte, insists that she agrees to it. During the meeting, Min Q thanks Yuri for the birthday cards she sent, but he realizes that the letters were actually from her father, not Yuri herself. On way back home, Min Q continues to treat Jia like a robot, mentioning that he will reset her program after the test is over. However, he secretly hopes that Jia whom he believes to be AG3, is actually human. Ja feels guilty and sad upon hearing this because she has come to care for Min Q and regrets entering his life under false pretenses. In another scene, Ja takes her nephew to the hospital due to his allergies. There she meets Dr. O, who happens to be treating her nephew. She asks Dr. O if allergies caused by human touch exist. 
Dr. O confirms that such a condition does exist and can be cured when the sufferer finds someone they can truly trust. He recalls a patient he had seen with the same condition recently. On the other hand, Jinbi receives a call from Gongsa, the former driver of Min Q's late father, whom he had been searching for. Dongsa offers to send all the videos he has to Min Q if Jinbi can help remove Daowon from the company. After that, Jinbi is called to Daowon's room, where Daowon tries to convince him to side with him. Daowon reveals his plan to fire Min Q from KM Financial soon. This puts Jinbi in a difficult position as he struggles to choose between siding with Daowon or remaining loyal to Min Q. Daowon, suspecting that Dongsa might have evidence against him, orders his men to search for him knowing that Min-Q is also looking for him. Dongsa indeed possesses evidence of Daowon's misconduct all this time. In addition, Daowon's men inquire about AG-3, not realizing that AG-3 is actually Ja. In another scene, Bak Kyun takes Ja out to dinner, hoping to win her back. There, Ja explains her reasons for breaking up with him. She felt neglected as Bak Kyun was always too busy with his research and never had time for her. He didn't listen to her stories and often dismissed her ideas as useless. Meanwhile, Jinbi shares all the information he has about Daowon, including Dongsa's tapes, with Min Q. He even gives Min Q all his IDs and passwords, allowing him to access KM Financial's data freely to investigate Daowon's fraudulent activities. Jinbi apologizes for doubting Min Q before leaving. On the other hand, Bak Ken surprises Job with the help of Sanip, Hoktal, and Pai. They'd offer their assistance in the competition she is about to participate in and also promise to fix the lamp that Jinbi had broken. Meanwhile, Min Q finally reads the petition letter that Jai wrote, and he is deeply moved by its contents. The day of the competition organized by KM Financial has arrived. Yuchul takes part in the event, and Jia disguises herself to avoid being recognized by Min Q and Jinbi. However, Jinbi easily spots her despite her disguise. During the event's opening, as Yu Chul is about to give a speech, he notices Min Q observing him from the top stand. Throughout the event, Jia's light stand doesn't seem to attract much attention, which makes her feel disheartened. But suddenly, she feels her father's presence, and her enthusiasm returns, inspiring her to keep trying to draw the audience's attention towards her light. Later, Bat Kin arrives and tells Jinbi that Jia has a unique and passionate mind. Jinbi's initial suspicions about Jia now turn into pride for her. After the event ends, Yuchul visits the participants' booths one by one, including Jaws and Min Q's. However, it turns out they specifically come to Jaws stand. Min Q teases her about giving the lamp to a friend who always makes him suffer. His words remind Ja of when Min Q told her to remember the faces of Yuchul and Dawan, suggesting she should leave her friend and find a new one. Min Q tests the lamp, and suddenly he sees Ja's shadow as AG3, which confuses him further. Surprisingly, Min Q's illness is cured at that moment. Soon after, Bak Kyun confesses his past mistakes to Jinbi and seeks his help to win Ja back. However, Jinbi decides not to meddle in their love affairs. He advises Bak Kyun to keep his relationship with Ja a secret for a while to avoid disturbing Min Q's emotions. Jinbi reveals that Min Q is currently protecting Bak Kyun's team and Daeang shipbuilding from Daewon, who plans to sell them to the bold company. In another scene, Min Q meets Dr. O oh and embraces him, expressing that his illness has been healed when he held the lamp and saw AG3. However, Dr. O oh advises him to let go of AG3 because Min Q is about to marry Yeri. Dr. O oh suggests that Min Q should consider his 15 year illness as being cured through AG3's help. He reminds Min Q that AG3 is just a robot and cannot accompany him until old age. As Min Q departs, Jao arrives to see Dr. O oh and inquire further about the disease she previously asked him about. Dr. O oh shows Ja a video of a patient with the same illness as Min Q, and Ja becomes emotional as she realizes she might be separated from him. She asks if someone can recover with the help of a robot, which raises Dr. O's oh suspicion. He then asks if Ja knows Bak Kyun. Meanwhile, Min Q invites Bak Kyun to a cafe to discuss his recovery. He expresses gratitude for being able to recover thanks to the robot, created by Bak Kyun. At the same time, Ja brings Dr. O to Bak Kyun's research site. Dr. O is surprised to see that AG3's face closely resembles Ja's. His anger rises, and he demands to know where Bak Kyun is, while Bak Kyun observes Min Q crying over his lingering feelings for AG3. After returning to his research site, 
that Kim is confronted by Ja, who expresses her disappointment in him. She knew that Min Q had an allergy to humans, yet Bak Kim still sent her to pose as AG3. Ja feels used, fearing that Min Q's condition will worsen when he discovers the truth that she is the robot he's been interacting with. Pai tries to explain that Ja misunderstood, but she doesn't want to hear any explanations and leaves. Outside, Miami and Alf, who are monitoring the situation, see Ja leaving Bak Kim's research area. They follow her and find out that AG3 has been at Chinbi's house all this time. Meanwhile, Bak Kin reviews the recordings of Ja pretending to be AG3. He regrets his actions and contacts her to apologize. However, Ja believes that the mistake is not only Bak Kin's fault. She decides to tell everything to Min Q, and Bak Kin agrees with her because they know they must end the lies they had created. At the same time, Min Q summons AG3 to his house, and this time the real AG3 meets him. Min Q confesses that he cannot control his feelings. He cries sadly because AG3's test will soon be over, and he can no longer suppress his emotions for her. The scene changes, showing back Kim and Ja on their way to tell Min Q everything. However, Dr. O calls and advises them against it after hearing the news of a patient who died after being deceived by someone they trusted. He warns them to find another way so that Min Q won't experience the same heartbreak. Sometime later, Bak Kim suggests to Min Q that they should reset the AG3 program back to its original settings, and Min Q agrees with the idea. However, Ja is compelled to pretend to be AG3 once again so she can spend some final moments with Min Q before the reset. They both confess their happiness to each other, and Min Q even gives Ja his late mother's necklace. Though it's tough, he eventually resets the AG3 and Ja programs, expressing his genuine love for her. After the emotional event, Ja falls ill due to suppressing her sadness for so long. On the other hand, Min Q starts changing his life and begins to interact with the employees at his company, appearing happy even though they find him quite intimidating. The scene shifts, showing Min Q, assisted by Jinbi, gathering all the company files he plans to investigate. He asked about Dong's whereabouts, but Jimmy hasn't found any information yet. Shortly after, Madame X sends an email about Dawan's stock accumulation to terminate Min Q. Seeing this, Min Q realizes that he needs to retrieve the recording from Dong Sip as soon as possible. When Min Q returns home, he is surprised to find Bak Kin's team cooking in his kitchen. They did it because Ja asked them not to leave Min Q alone. They all eat together and play a game of red light and green light. Even though Bak Kin's team is there, Min Q still imagines that AG3 is in front of him. On the other side, Min Q was busy checking the newly released action figures list. He wanted to buy one, so he called President Cho, who was none other than Ja. However, she declined, saying she couldn't buy it because she would be going somewhere far. Ja ended the call and couldn't help but cry sadly. Little did she know that Bak Kim overheard the conversation from outside her room. Later on, Ja recovered and got a passport for her trip to Australia. She shared her plans with her sister-in-law and nephew. To gather money for the plane tickets, she returned to working part-time. Meanwhile, Yuchul had a change of heart and asked his father not to sell the Daeang shipbuilding to the Bolt Company. But his father insisted on the sale, hoping Yuchul would take Min Q's position. Regardless, Yuchul stood firm and left his father's room. It turned out that Yuchul overheard Dawan and his men talking about the secret of Min Q's father's death, which Dong had kept. On the other hand, Min Q's attempt to meet Dong Se failed as Dawan's men were after him. Realizing his plan didn't work, Min Q and Jin Bi devised another strategy they had prepared. The scene shifted, showing Min Q accompanying Yeri as she tried on clothes for their upcoming engagement. Yeri noticed that Min Q seemed forced, and it reminded her of Yuchul. Unbeknownst to Min Q, Ja was also present and sent a package to the boutique. Luckily, she left before Min Q noticed. She believed that he had forgotten about AG3 and was now living a happy life. The next day, the shareholders' meeting at KM Financial started. Min Q executed his backup plan, bringing Bak Kyun's team to the higher ups. He revealed that Bak Kyun's team was actually developing robots, not building ships as Dawan had concealed. This revelation led to Yuchul resigning from the company to protect his father's reputation. At the meeting, Yuchul expressed his disappointment in Min Q, feeling that Min Q had abandoned him, but Min Q argued that Yuchul had left him years ago when he took over the company. When Min Q returned home, he received the promised land from Ja, which brought back memories of AG3 again. 
Not long after, Bat Ken messaged Min Q, suggesting changing AG3's face. Min Q rushed to Bat Kin and pleaded not to alter AG3's appearance because he missed her so much. He took AG3 home and tried to recreate their first encounter, hoping it would bring AG3 back. He regretted resetting the AG3 program. However, his attempts were in vain as AG3 wasn't Ja, the one who had been with him all along. The following day, Min Q met with Yeri to discuss their engagement, but decided against it, which relieved Yeri. They returned to being friends. Soon after, Min Q took the train to work, claiming you wanted some fresh air. Surprisingly, Ja was at the same station and on the same train. The unexpected meeting surprised them both. On the other hand, Ja had initially planned to stay in her sister-in-law's hometown and live with her grandmother before going to Australia. But unexpectedly, she runs into Min Q, so she has no choice but to pretend not to know him. Meanwhile, Min Q can only stare at her, lost in daydreams, captivated by her face. When Min Q reaches his destination, he makes a bold decision. He buys another ticket to follow Ja and cancels his job. He calls Bak Kin to ask about AG3's face model. However, Bak Kin explains that AG3 was based on the model of a part time woman who cannot be contacted anymore. Min Q asks Bak Kin to introduce him to AG3's model someday, but Bak Kin advises against it, fearing that Min Q might act strangely in front of her and suggests ignoring her. Soon after, Bak Ken tries to call Ja to ensure they won't meet each other. However, he can't reach her on the phone. Later, he meets Yuchul, who shows him a photo of Ja he got from Miami. Bak Ken calmly claims that Ja was merely a model for AG3. Yuchul then questions whether the woman Min Q met was Ja or AG3. Bak Ken pretends not to understand the question and leaves the place. Meanwhile, Pei discovers a strange protected folder on her computer that is large and cannot be deleted. Not long after, Miami cleverly disguised himself as the room designer that Bak Kimmon's team was expecting. He cleverly inserted a flash drive containing a virus into the computers of the hackers hired by Yuchul. Meanwhile, Zhao arrived at her grandmother's house, a cozy place with food and lodging. She took up work there to keep her mind off Min Q. Little did she know, Min Q was still following her wherever she went. Eventually, he mustered the courage to confront her. However, Ja continued to pretend not to recognize Min Q and insisted he should leave. Despite that, Min Q ordered some food to buy time so he could have a chance to get to know Ja better. While she was preparing the food, he cleverly hid her necklace between the plates and informed Bak Kyun that Min Q was following her. At the same time, Bak Kyun and his team were in a battle against the hackers hired by Yuchul. Fortunately, one by one, the hackers gave up as they couldn't break through the defenses of Bak Kyun's team. Thankfully, Bak Kyun's team managed to keep their important files safe, and after gathering some evidence, Bak Kyun finally uncovered the identity of the mastermind behind the cyber attack. On the other side, Yuchul was seen meeting Yeri at a cafe. There, she expressed her disappointment with him due to his bad behavior. Yeri returned home and declared that she didn't want to continue her engagement with Min Kyu but her father insisted on it. Shortly after she left, Yuchul received news that the hackers he hired were starting to give up, which made him furious. Meanwhile, Min Q waited for Ja with the food still in front of him. Ja confronted him, asking why he followed her. At the same time, Bak Kin read Ja's messages and tried to contact her, but she couldn't be reached. Then Bak Kimmon called Dr. O to inform him about Ja and Min Q's meeting. Dr. O ordered Ja to keep their secret forever. Meanwhile, Min Q explained to Ja that he followed her because he recently lost a friend who resembled her. She was taken aback by his words but pretended not to recognize Min Q for his own good. However, Min Q persisted and Ja finally admitted that she was the model for AG3, but not the AG3 he knew. Afterward, she told Min Q to leave. He pleaded to stay to see her face, and she reluctantly agreed but dragged him outside. On the other hand, Bat Kyun was seen trying to catch up with Min Q accompanied by Pai, who insisted on accompanying him because she didn't want him to face difficulties alone. The scene shifted to Ja calling Sun Hai, but Min Q suddenly appeared, surprising them. Min Q realized that the first time Ja met him was when she disguised herself as AG3. He was allowed to enter because he had rented a room from Ja's grandmother. After a while, Bak Kyun called Min Q and advised him not to be too possessive with his robot model, then hung up abruptly. Min Q then called Jinbi to inquire about the identity of AG3's model, but Jinbi kept it a secret from him. 
Meanwhile, one of the remaining hackers successfully broke into the system and copied the undeletable files. On the other hand, Batkin's car suddenly broke down in the middle of the road. Meanwhile, Ja's grandmother asked Min Q to accompany Ja to the warehouse to retrieve something. Excited to be close to Ja, Min Q eagerly accepted the invitation. Inside the warehouse, Min Q started to reminisce about his moments with AG3. As they searched for the item, someone accidentally locked the door, thinking the warehouse was empty, leaving Min Q and Ja trapped inside. Unfortunately, there was no signal for P to contact them from outside. Later on, Pai suggested Bak Kim rest and fix his car in the morning. She asked if Bak Kim was okay with Ja and Min Q's relationship, to which he replied that he had accepted Ja's decision to leave, as there was nothing they could do to mend their relationship. At the moment, his priority was to save Min Q, whom he considered as a brother. Bak Kim acknowledged that it hurt, but it couldn't compare to the pain Ja and Min Q were experiencing. As Bak Kim slept, P took on the task of repairing the car alone. Meanwhile, Min Q and Ja spent time together sharing stories. Min Q opened up about his feelings while he was with AG3. Ja felt both happy and sad upon hearing his story. They spent the entire night together until morning arrived. Then the scene shifts to Yuchul's hacker, successfully breaking into AG3's password protected folder, retrieving a secret video that Yuchul plans to use against Min Q. At the same time, Yuri mustered the courage to call off her engagement with Min Q once again but her father insisted on proceeding with the arrangement, leaving Yeri feeling helpless. Shortly after, Bak Kim and Pai arrived at Ja's place, intending to take Min Kyu back home. However, Ja's grandmother received news of a friend's accident and had to leave Ja alone to manage the shop. Just as they were about to leave, a rush of customers arrived, overwhelming Ja. Bak Kim and Pai stepped in to help her serve the customers, and she retrieved the necklace she had hidden. On another occasion, Yuchul met with Jinbi and revealed something related to Ja that left Jinbi speechless. Despite this, Jinbi remained determined to protect his little sister. He tried to call Min Q and planned to tell him that the model for AG3 was actually his little sister. However, Min Q hung up on him and promised to call back after finishing his meal. Meanwhile, Yuchul met with his father and expressed his intention to reclaim his position. He urged Dowen to gather the board of directors to oust Min Q. On the other hand, Hoctel and Sanip finally realized that the stolen computer's folder belonged to AG3. Ja had created the folder when Min Q was about to reset AG3's program, and it contained all the videos of Ja disguised as AG3. While Bot Kin and P were out shopping, Sanip and Hoctel informed them that the AG3 folder had been hacked. Bat Kin hurried back, but to his dismay, Min Q was not in the car. Meanwhile, Dawan received a flash drive containing a video that allegedly showed Min Q succumbing to his illness, and Dawan planned to use this video to get rid of Min Q. Meanwhile, Min Q went back to the shop to find Ja, but he was told she had gone to the beach with all her belongings. Worried, he hurried to the beach and found her crying. His sudden appearance surprised her, and she forgot to hide her necklace. In that moment, Min Q finally realized that AG3, who had been by his side all along, was actually Ja. The realization hit him hard, and his rash reappeared as he knew that Ja and Bak Kin's team had deceived him. As the days passed, Min Q's condition worsened as he struggled to bear the pain. Thankfully, Bak Kin administered medicine and took him home with Dr. O's help. Bak Kin's team and Ja felt extremely guilty, as their worst fears had become a reality. With treatment from Dr. O and the support of his memories with Ja, Min Q managed to survive the critical period. On the other hand, Dawan met with Bak Kin's team to discuss the incriminating test video, an article he had obtained, which could ruin Min Q. He planned to distribute the article to oust Min Q from the company. They agreed to exchange information and videos stolen from AG3 and Bak Kin, and Bak Kin reluctantly agreed to part ways with AG3 to protect Min Q's position in the company, valuing his recovery and safety above all else. After regaining consciousness, Min Q was seen limping towards the kitchen. Ja, dressed in a medical uniform, wanted to help him, but she was afraid of triggering his illness. Dr. O then met with Bak Kin's team and Jinbi to deliver the news that Min Q had made it through the critical period, relieving them all. After that, Jinbi visited Min Q and handed him a written statement from Bak Kin's confessing her lies. Upon learning the truth, Min Q was furious and immediately ordered Jinbi to sue them all without any exceptions. 
However, Jimmy explained that he couldn't sue them because doing so would lead to his own dismissal from the company, as Bak Kyun had signed an agreement with Dowan. Despite Jinbi's warning, Min Kyu was determined to proceed with the lawsuit. In response, Jinbi decided to submit his resignation letter, revealing that Jia was his younger sister. He promised to leave after completing all the tasks assigned by Min Kyu. Feeling deeply disappointed and hurt by the betrayal of those he had trusted, Min Kyu no longer cared about them. He expelled Jinbi and Bak Kyun's team from his house, and Jinbi conveyed the message to Bak Kyun's team. They accepted Min Kyu's decision and packed their belongings, uncertain about where to go next. Meanwhile, Jia sought advice from Dr. O oh on how to help Min Kyu. Dr. O oh advised her to focus on rebuilding Min Kyu's trust. Soon after, Min Kyu returned home and asked his sister in law to teach him how to cook. At the same time, Bak Kyun's team shared Min Kyu's demands with Sun Hai, and she explained that the deeper the love, the more painful the disappointment. Despite understanding her words, they still believed they deserved Min Kyu's anger and disappointment. The scene shifts, and now we see Dawan meeting Sunte once again. They plan to marry their two children and conspire to get rid of Min Kyu. In the end, Sumti agrees because he doesn't want his daughter to marry someone with a strange illness like Min Kyu. The next morning, Jia brings the food she cooked, but Min Kyu ignores her and throws it all away. Despite this, Jia keeps trying to seek forgiveness for Min Kyu. Meanwhile, Bak Ken takes Pai to a college campus to offer her a job as a professor, but Pai refuses because she wants to stay with Bak Ken no matter what. As time goes on, Jia continues to return every morning to prepare food for Min Kyu. This angers him, and he believes that Jia is doing it to make him give up his demands. When Min Kyu tries to touch Jia, she avoids him, making him even more suspicious. He throws away the food once again and sends her away. But before leaving, Jia declares that she is not afraid of his illness and will keep coming back to see him. After spending a day searching for a place to live, Bak Kyun takes Pai to a cafe to rest. There, Pi asks if he is afraid that she will accept the professor offer and leave him. Bak Kyun honestly admits his fear of losing Pai, which brings a strange smile to her face. During their conversation, Bak Kyun talks about Min Kyu's situation. Pi advises him to trust Jia because she knows Min Kyu better than they do. At the same time, Min Kyu meets with his butler, Mr. Sung, because he is uneasy about Jia's words. He asks Mr. Sung not to let Jia into his house again. Mr. Sung then shares a story about a hedgehog enduring the pain of hunting to fight the cold, and Min Kyu understands the meaning behind the story. The next day, Jia arrived at Min Kyu's house later than expected due to an accident. This made Min Kyu believe she was lying to him again. When she finally arrived, Min Kyu expressed his frustration accusing her of disguising herself as AG3 just to manipulate him into reopening the competition she was in. Amidst tears, Min Kyu told Jia that she should have continued hiding her lies to spare him from so much pain. Jia attempted to explain everything, but Min Kyu refused to listen and asked her to leave. Nevertheless, she continued sending him food. The following day, Sun Hai visited Min Kyu's house and shared that Bak Kyun and his team truly cared for him. She revealed that Jia tried to apologize and had even learned to cook, resulting in her hands getting covered in wounds. After saying that, Sun Hai took one of the lamps made by Jia to her room and left the other lamp at Min Kyu's house. She then went somewhere to verify Sun Hai's words. It turned out that what Sun Hai said was true when he saw Santa Ben Hoktel running after his car just to apologize. Min Kyu returned home and noticed that the umbrella Jia left was exactly the same as the one he had kept all this time. He remembered the portfolio that revealed it was her creation. Recalling his past desire to meet the genius behind the umbrella, Min Kyu touched Jia's lamp, and the lights in her room shone, triggering memories of Min Kyu inviting her to watch a shooting star on a hill. The scene shifted, and finally, Jia and Min Kyu met at that place. He asked her to explain all the lies and hidden facts she had kept from him. She began recounting their journey, starting from when she was President Cho to becoming Cho Jia. Meanwhile, Sumta met with Dawan to discuss his plan to get Yeri and Yuchul married. However, Yeri refused because she was still upset with Yuchul and her father's behavior. On the other hand, Pla was surprised when Sun Hai asked Hoptal out on a date right in front of him. Back to Jia and Min Kyu, after listening to her story, Min Kyu decided to leave and say goodbye. But Jia stopped him, revealing that her feelings for him were genuine, not just part of the story. She confessed that she loved him as herself, not just as a robot. Hearing this, he turned back and kissed her, and they shared a happy hug that night. 
Meanwhile, Sun Hai and Hockdol decided to start dating. The next day, the Bold Company's leader, Martin, met with Dawin and Yuchul, demanding that they hand over AG3 for inspection before the signing ceremony. At the same time, Jin and Bak Kin searched for Dongsen after receiving an email from Matt and X. They asked Dongsen to join forces and remove Dawan from the company, but he was afraid for his family's safety and refused to hand over the recording. On the other hand, Min Q felt awkward as he remembered how he had treated Jinbi all this time. Still, he mustered the courage to call Jinbi and asked him to drop all charges against Bak Kyun's team and jaw. When Jinbi arrived at Min Q's house, they discussed the resignation letter. Min Q rejected it and asked Jinbi to work with him again because he believed that Jinbi had not deceived him. Jinbi shared the information he had gathered about Martin, who was planning to take AG3 and Dongsa, who was unwilling to cooperate. As Min Q read Sanip's application letter, Mr. Sung interrupted, informing him that something was happening at the research site. They rushed there and found out that Martin's men had taken AG3. Meanwhile, Martin and his colleagues discussed AG3, unaware that the robot could record and store information secretly. They saw AG3 as a dangerous weapon and discussed the secret behind Min Q's parents' death. The scene shifted, showing Min Q meeting Bak Kin and asking him to tell the truth about Ja and AG3. Bak Kin confessed everything, admitting that he had given up on Ja because he believed Min Q deserved to be with her and make her happy. After hearing Bak Kin's story, Min Q went to Dawan to propose selling Bak Kin's team to him in exchange for his resignation from the company. However, Dawan declined the offer, stating that he could still get rid of Min Q because of his illness, even without Bak Kin's team. Yu Chul later visited Min Q, criticizing him for being foolish and willing to change positions for people who had deceived him. Min Q responded that someone like Yu Chul would never understand his decision. Then the scene changed and Min Q sought Sung Tae's help, but Sung Tae flatly refused, insisting that he would set Yuri up with Yu Chul instead. Back at home, Min Q received an email from Madame X containing the results of a reinvestigation into his parents' deaths. Meanwhile, the publishing company had prepared an article under Dawan's orders. The following day, Ja and Bak Kin's team prepared dinner for Min Q. It turned out to be their last dinner together, as they were about to move away. However, Min Q didn't want to part ways and asked them to stay, to which they agreed. Meanwhile, AG3 kept reminiscing about Martin's different attitude compared to Bak Kin's team. After dinner, P went to the research site and cried because she missed AG3. Shortly after, Bat Kin arrived and apologized for his decision, comforting Pi. While Ja was consoling Min Q about the company's unresolved problems, his phone rang with an email from Madden X. He finally found a way to defend the company and Bat Kin's team. Ja then accompanied Min Q to meet a woman who claimed to be Madame X's subordinate. The woman revealed that the bold company was being monitored by Interpol for crimes like murder, fraud, and destruction. However, they lacked sufficient evidence to make an arrest. The woman suggested that if Dongsa had something incriminating on Martin, it could help Interpol catch him and offer Dongsa witness protection. The next day, Min Q and Jinbi met with Dongsen to convince him to cooperate, providing a witness protection letter from Interpol. Soon after, Min Q halted the meeting between Dawan and the Bold Company and called the police, resulting in Dawan's arrest on charges of murdering Min Q's parents and other company officials. Meanwhile, Dawan's men received information that AG3 had disappeared. Min Q urgently called Bak Kin to find AG3 before Martin could reach her. On the other hand, Dawan remained silent even though the recording of his involvement in Min Q's parents' death was played. Yuchul also discovered that it was Martin and Dawan who orchestrated the killings and used him to control the company. Soon after, AG3 was located by Martin's subordinates, but Miami and Alf managed to rescue her. The police and Bak Kin's team arrived to provide assistance. AG3 returned home with Bak Kin's team, expressing her happiness in interacting with humans during the trip. Bak Kin then asked her to back up all her recording files. In another scene, Min Q, tired and hungry from fulfilling his duties, asked Ja to cook something for him. Shortly after, they shared a kiss. While Min Q enjoyed his time with Ja, Dawan was still determined to remove him from the company. He manipulated Sumti to work with them by showing him an agreement letter. Sumti fell into Dawan's trap, and they planned to upload a video of Min Q's apparent death. Despite Yuri's pleas to her father to stop, Sumti refused to listen. Yuri then called Yuchul to look for the videotape, 
discovering that Dowen had intentionally cut parts of AG3's test video to deceive Yuchul. At the same time, Min Q and Bak Kyun's team were celebrating Sanev's birthday. Pai surprised everyone by changing her appearance to look more feminine. During the celebration, they watched footage from when Martin brought AG3, and this footage allowed Bak Kyun's team to develop other robots that could interact with humans. Afterward, Bak Kyun made the decision to deactivate AG3 and change its appearance. They wanted the program to continue developing the next robot. With a heavy heart, they thanked AG3 in bitter farewell, promising that she would always live in their hearts. Later, Min Q handed over Martin's crime confession to the woman sent by Madding X. Meanwhile, Yuchul wanted to apologize to Min Q, but he hesitated to enter his house. Eventually, with Mr. Sung's guidance, he mustered the courage to meet Min Q. At that meeting, Mr. Sung revealed the suffering Min Q endured for 15 years, and Yuchul finally understood his mistakes. He then met Yuri to discuss their plan. The next day, the layoff meeting at Cam Finance began. Just as the board was about to propose a decision, Yuchul intervened and brought reporters to witness Min Q's statement. Min Q revealed his illness and how Bak Kyun's team and the robot had helped him recover. He had announced that Cam Finance would now invest in Bak Kyun's team to further develop the robot. The news spread quickly, and many investors became interested in Min Q's company. Yuchul convinced the higher ups that Min Q was the right person to lead the company, and both he and Yuri refused to lay off, leaving other high ranking officials powerless including Samte. Later, Yeri brought Min Q and Yuchul together. Yuchul sincerely apologized for his mistakes, and Min Q forgave him happily. Min Q then asked Yuchul to persuade Dawan to stop and take responsibility for his actions, as Interpol had the recording. Min Q believed that Dawan should face the consequences of his actions and have a chance to reflect on his mistakes. The scene changed and Jinbi met Min Q. He felt his work was done and asked Min Q to accept his resignation from the other day. Unfortunately, Han Zhou overheard the news and got angry. Even Jia and her nephew couldn't calm her down. The next day, Jia asked Min Q to come to her house to persuade Jinbi to return to work in front of Hong Zhou. Meanwhile, Sun Hai and Hopdol were seen on their first date, but Sanip seemed to be bothering them. Meanwhile, Bak Kyun and Pai had a blast at the place Min Q suggested. Surprisingly, Sanip met an old friend from America and spent time with them and their partners. The scene then changes, showing Min Q visiting Dawan in prison. Min Q asked him to stop pursuing his ambitions because Min Q, Yeri, and Yuchul planned to lead the company differently from their parents. After that, Min Q went to Jia's house and asked Jinbi not to resign. Jinbi finally agreed, but with the condition that Min Q would separate work and personal matters. At work, Min Q was the boss, but outside, he acted like a candidate for his elder brother in law and agreed with Jinbi's conditions. After that, Jia took Min Q to her room, where he saw lots of her creative ideas that she had kept in her locker. Soon after, Jia's nephew called them because Hong Zhou was having contractions. They took Hong Zhou to the hospital, and everyone was delighted when she gave birth to a very cute baby girl. Two years later, Bak Kin succeeded in creating a new robot, and his team found success. Jia successfully marketed her ideas, and Jinbi held a more significant role than just being a secretary at Min Q's company. Meanwhile, Yuri and Yutel started living together. They all prepared to welcome Min Q's return for military service, which was delayed due to his illness. The series ended with Jia happily welcoming Min Q's arrival. The end. <laughs> <laughs>